So hello and welcome to today's webinar, Online Sales Options and Methods for Farmers and Ranchers. My name is Rachel Callahan and I am the Statewide Agritourism Coordinator with the University of California's Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, otherwise known as UC SARA. This webinar is part of a project called Strengthening Local Food Networks with Agritourism and Direct Sales. Information about past and upcoming webinars that are a part of this series can be found on the UC SARA website, and I'm going to put that in the chat momentarily. But today we are excited to be joined by Elizabeth Vaughn, the Tech Hub Specialist with the Community Alliance for Family Farmers, who will discuss how e-commerce can be used to support your operations and give us an overview of different platforms, and then tell us about uh, what CAF uh, but that's the acronym for Community Alliance for Family Farmers, uh, how they are supporting farmers with their new tech hub. And then after that, we will hear from Sierra Shapiro, Shapiro, excuse me, owner operator of AM Ranch in Penn Valley, who will share her experiences and lessons learned incorporating online sales into her business. At the end, we will open it up to questions for either Elizabeth or Sierra. So feel free to type questions into the Q&A and the chat throughout the presentation. And we'll also be putting links to more information into the chat as we go along, such as the link to find out more about this webinar series. <laughs> so without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. And welcome, everyone. We see we got a nice crowd of you in. and We'll probably expect more as we get more into today's session. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to spend the next hour with you all and offer guidance on online sales, e-commerce, and methods um, during today's presentation and discussion. All right. So what we'll be covering today, Rachel already did a pretty good job of that. We are going to be looking at how e-commerce can support you with your marketing and sales, especially with COVID and everything that's been going on. We're going to just gain a basic understanding of e-commerce pl platforms. I'm going to give you a very broad overview of some of the options. Um, and then we're going to hear directly from the field with uh, Sierra and AM Ranch on adopting new platforms during COVID and their experiences with those trials and tribulations that they went through. Um, and we're launching a new program called the Tech Hub. So I'm going to be sharing more about that with you as well. Um, as Rachel mentioned, we are going to have a Q&A answer portion at the end. So um, during my presentation, during Sierra's presentation, if any questions come to mind for you, please put those in the chat box or the Q&A box as they come up. We'd love to capture those from you as they're coming, and then we'll, we'll consolidate those and ask them at the end during the Q&A discussion. Um, and you're all muted now, but if you have any issues finding any of the, the options, please just ask us in the chat. You should see the Q&A in the chat box options on your end. Um, and we're also recording today's session. So we're gonna be sharing the recording and a follow-up email. Um, and if you enjoy today's content, we ask that you share it with someone, with a friend or a business that you think may be able to benefit from today's content. All right, so before we jump in, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Community Alliance of Family Farmers. You maybe haven't heard about us before, um, but we are a nonprofit here that works across California supporting small family farms. And we build sustainable food and farming systems through policy advocacy and on the ground programs that create more resilient family farms, communities, and ecosystems. This is a quick overview of our structure. Um, so we have multiple programs and pathways for supporting family farmers in California, such as yourself. I know some of you are out of the state, um, but we have lots of resources posted on our website for free as well. Um, so please always feel free to reach out for support in any of these areas. Um, we actually have a new program for fire resilience that you can see here with some free grants um, that has happened because of all the wildfires that are taking place across our state. Um, and this session in particular is brought to you by our Farmer Services Program, which provides additional support on food safety um, and this program, the new Technology Hub. And we're really excited to provide this service to farmers across California. Um, in my position, I'm Elizabeth Vaughn, the photo you see there, uh, as, a tech hub, as a Tech Hub Specialist, is to identify web-based solutions that will make purchasing local food more convenient, accessible, and competitive. Um, so we're just getting the Tech Hub launched this spring. We're going to be providing a lot of direct support around e-commerce. So please post any questions, concerns, area of interest you have that's related to web-based technologies or online sales, because your comments really will help to inform our future topics. So please don't hold back, put any, any and all questions you have 
into that chat box or the Q&A box. So a bit more um, about this small farm tech hub. Uh, we know as a small farm operation, you're all wearing multiple hats, managing tight budgets and busy at keeping customers happy and engaged. I um, mean, we know farm to market technology is a big need. Uh, so this year we are launch launching our small farm tech hub and this hub will be providing free resources, templates, consulting services for California family farms and related food businesses on pivoting to sales model models better suited for our current environment and longer term purchasing trends. And boy, did we see a lot of that happen during COVID. So you'll be able to arrange for direct one-on-one -on -one consulting appointments with our Tech Hub team. And you're gonna see a poll question get launched later on during today's webinar on if you're interested in receiving that support. And I highly encourage everyone to complete that poll. And there's also a link that will be posted or is posted in the chat for you to subscribe to our contact list for receiving direct support and resources on e-commerce in case for some reason we miss you when that poll is launched. Please feel free to add your contact information into that link now. Um, so at CAF, we want to ensure the success of small land-based entrepreneurs. And through these direct support opportunities, we seek to invest in education, technology, and collaboration to help our local food systems survive the current crisis and thrive well into the future. So first, a bit about technology and how it supports you as a farmer and as a business owner. So technology is tied in to all pieces of your business. It offers tools to allow you to better reach your customer, manage your business, whether that's keeping books or projecting future sales. And there are a lot of strategies that you develop as a business owner, whether on paper or in your head. Um, you're all you all determined at some point what you would sell. You asked what products and market channels best fit your skills and business goals. And technology offers tools and tactics to help support those strategies and make your goals happen. We know farms run a tight ship with low profit margins, but you can't sell your product unless people know about it and can easily buy it when they want to buy it. And online sales can be a huge support in doing that. So during this webinar, I'll be assuming most of you are direct marketers or you're looking to shift more of your sales to direct to consumer or direct market um, and looking to build platforms with your customers in mind. For today's webinar, we'll be putting our focus into e-commerce, but there's a lot more where this came from. Our tech hub is also here to support you with any of your business needs and help identify proper tools and tactics that, may, that best fit your operation. So whether that's getting an email campaign set up with your existing customers, getting a Facebook page launch, or maybe figuring out which um, online platform or online storefront can be fully integrated with all your other services. We're here to help. Um, and we're also supporting cooperatives, uh, farmers markets, food hubs, and those folks as well, who are also selling direct to consumers. So you'll see question, um, get posted in the chat, and we love to hear from you. But we love to hear what farm technology topics would you like to see covered in a future webinar? What would be most helpful? Please, please share away. So now I'm going to take a step back and pay, paint a landscape of what happened during COVID because what happens to the market happens to your business. So here's a, just a quick snapshot, a, vol a summary of the volume of folks who are searching for CSA programs in California during the last 12 months. And we can all see that huge spike in March and April and what, that's, and what that is from. Um, and a lot of your sales, if a lot of your sales are made online, you'll want to designate a certain percentage of your expenses towards maintaining that pl platform and improving upon it. Um, but we also need to think of long-term goals for your business and how current trends may impact those goals. So taking um, a step back, here's a snapshot of that exact same search, but over the last 17 years, you'll see that there's a, another big spike back in 2004. So technology is a tool to be used, not only for e-commerce, but also for our consumer trends. Um, there wasn't a pandemic back then, but we thought there was a big spike in interest. So the future is uncertain, but we can always do our best to make swags, as the Disney executive Nick Coat termed, which stands for scientific wild ass gases. We'll do our best, and we'll, we're here to help you make those scientific wild ass gases with what available data we have available to us. So how do we respond to trends as farmers? We adapt, and we've seen a lot of you all making great swags out there over the last year. Um, so this is Travis from Organic Valley who responded to the pandemic. The real key is going to be how do we continue to sustain this moving forward? 
A farmer from Wisconsin, Chris Duke has quoted, I love the CSA model, but the CSA model by itself is 30 years old and has a, and a lot has changed in the food marketplace in technology and consumer expectations. It's a totally different world now. So as a farmer, you're all leapfrogging into this new technology and you're serving as the center of this innovation. You have responded and adapted to the surge we've seen across the country. And we've seen tremendous resilience and adaptability in our small family farmers. COVID spotlighted the power of the small farm. It spotlighted food security, public health safety, and labor concerns with consolidated ag corporations. Collectively, small farms are the most adaptable and our new tech hub exists to propel you all even further along. And we want you to know that you are not alone in navigating this complex, complex technology world and we're here to help. So highlighting some more um, current trends and expectations for going forward. Um, what scientific wild ass guesses can be made with this new world before us? So this graph shows that we have had a lot of new customers trying new market channels for the first time, and they have stuck around for at least a year. We saw about 10 years worth of market channel growth happen in one intense year. Many businesses had the opportunity to capture new customers. And now many of you who have been able to do that are working towards keeping those customers. Industry experts say that e-commerce and online sales is here to stay. This is a chart highlighting survey results from 5,000 respondents nationwide, which asked, during the next year, do you expect that you or your household will purchase more about the same or less food from this type of, re from this type of retailer than you do now? And the majority of consumers reported that they plan to maintain current patterns. And figure three, this figure here shows the share of respondents who plan to shop more to the green bars or less blue bars at various venues. Meal kits, farmers markets, as well as producers selling direct, super centers and food boxes appear most likely to gain new customers in the future. These surveys also show that there are opportunities to target households who show a tendency to buy from more local food businesses. So farmers, ranchers, and food businesses should consider how they can share information to give buyers transparent evidence that their products are locally grown and that their local food values align with the customer's local food values. Examples of how to do this may include a map of your farm and location of your markets and restaurants where your farm products can be found, sharing number of years your business has been a part of the community, um, and sharing information about the farm and the owners. So the customer, uh, that the customer is supporting that can relate to you. Your story is powerful and we want to make sure to share that and to use this data to help you as much as possible. So one way of getting these new customers, if you're looking to continue to capture some of this market, when these new customers were asked how they came across this new market channel, these are the results. Surprisingly, but maybe not too surprising to some of you is that word of mouth continues to be a key method for attracting new customers. Friends are still talking to each other. People are still asking for referrals. So that's a huge way um, to capture new customers just as it's always been. Um, but internet continues to be solid. People are searching for nearby farms like we saw in that Google search map. So it's really important to make sure you have a website and you have an online presence. So as a business selling direct, you take a customer centric approach for your marketing strategy, which involves these four areas how you reach your customer, how you engage them, how you convert them into a buying customer, and how you retain them going forward. Depending on how long you've been in business and how many little customers you have, your attention to the different levels of your marketing strategy may vary. And your e-commerce platform and tools can support with all four of these areas. So it's important to think about these strategies, how e-commerce will support you in achieving your goals and what budget is possible to make those goals happen. Monthly fees associated with your e-commerce site can add up quickly, but these fees may save you valuable and expensive labor hours in the long run. A Shopify storefront, for example, starts at $30 a month, um, but it, it can reach up to hundreds of dollars a month in fees if you have the different plugins for having different product selections, accounting systems integrated, etc. So what should be your budget? One general benchmark to note is that the Small Business Association recommends that small businesses allocate seven to 8% of their gross revenue for marketing and advertising. But these numbers can vary depending on the business. The $30 a month Shopify fee can fit a business perfectly who focuses on maybe one product and has sales around $300,000 a year. 
but a business with multiple products with multi-million dollar sales and, and a whole bunch of different offerings will likely have to upgrade that account. So for this webinar, we'll provide a bird's eye view of the e-business landscape. And it can seem overwhelming, but matching up your marketing and tech strategy with your level of operation is where you want to focus your energy. Did your marketing channels and customers shift with COVID? Does your, does your website reflect those changes? Are you now offering new products? Putting the effort into planning out your strategies and long-term goals will make e-commerce decision-making much easier. So my goal today isn't to work through the dozens of software platforms, plugins, APIs, payment processors, because as a department at CAFS Tech Hub, we'll be providing that support directly free to you as a farmer in California. And if you want assistance in this area um, and additional direction, again, I encourage you to provide your contact information when, you ask, when we ask you to. Um, so for this, for this webinar, we want to provide resources on how to evaluate all the options resources that give you a list of all the options available, um, and then bring that home with a real life example when we hear from AM Ranch on their experiences. So by this point, you may be feeling overwhelmed, but don't worry, it's very normal and you're not alone, and we are here to help. No one was born knowing any of these things, so have no fear. Ask lots of questions in the chat box and put those questions in as soon as we come up, as soon as they come up for you. Um, and we love to hear from you. Maybe add in the chat box, if anything comes to mind, what technology challenge is impacting your bottom line right now, maybe this last year? Did you feel like you were missing a market or missed additional sales? Do you feel like you could be saving time managing things and inventory on the back end than what you're currently working with now? Please share so we can better meet your needs as a tech hub. We love to hear what technology challenge is impacting your bottom line. So we have lots of resources to share with you. Um, and this is just one of them to help get your thoughts organized around where to start. And this one lays out some general guiding questions. So considerations for choosing an e-commerce platform for selling your farm products. These, the answers to these questions will impact what options are available to you for launching an online sales platform. Like, do you already have a website for your farm business? The website host that you use may prevent you from easily adding on an e-commerce platform and the different plug plugins that are available and compatible with those website hosts. Do you already have a point of sale system? I know Sarah is using Square, so maybe she can talk about how that influenced the website platform that they used. What do you want to be able to do? Are you looking to integrate accounting or marketing software? Can you easily connect those and streamline those activities? So we, again, we posted this in the chat um, for this resource, if you'd like to go over these questions in more detail. This slide provides an overview of all of the different components of an e-commerce site. Um, and again, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed, but there are literally dozens of options. So this doesn't even have all of them listed here. Services like Shopify and Squarespace offer bundled services like shopping carts, merchant accounts, and payment gateways. Um, and with no bundled services, you'll need shopping cart software like WooCommerce. Oh, there's also open source versus proprietary web platforms. There's template-driven do-it-yourself sites that are really growing rapidly. And there's lots, lots of options out there for also pay to have people set those up for you. And those are also becoming more affordable and more available. Do you want to manage your content yourself or depend on a developer to do that for you? But then you have to pay for that developer. So it's common to have to go back and forth, refine architecture after you've created this content. Um, as long as you're not chronic and extensive with you'll, and you're following a methodical process and you'll improve your efficiency and you'll be able to get to the right, the right landing page for you. I know Sierra tried a few different things before they landed with theirs. So we're here to help and we're here to set up that process to figure out what's gonna make the most sense for you. And a disclosure that CAF, as a nonprofit, and also UC Syrup, we're not endorsing any particular product or company. Our goal as a not-for-profit is to help small family farms in California navigate the sea of options so that you can all maintain your diverse and viable farm enterprises. So think of us as your many free business consultants and advisors. We're eager to help you identify solutions to your most pressing techno technological challenges, so please post any particular challenges or questions you have as they come up. 
There are lots of resources developed and being improved upon that can help get you started. So I wanted to share another resource. This is one that was created by the National Young Farmers Coalition, and it compares 19 different softwares and their capabilities. Does Harvey integrate with QuickBooks? Does local Orbit, Orbit offer online payment options? And these platforms are constantly being updated. Um, so I also wanna note that this resource is now over a year old, um, but it still offers great information, information um, such as all the fees that are associated with each platform as well. These may have changed a bit, but they're most likely around the same. And this resource is also going to be linked in the chat box for you to see and pull up for yourself. Another resource that actually builds off that last resource I just shared is from the CSA Innovation Network. Um, this resource highlights the top nine platforms as ranked by farmers. So as you can see, Gray's Cart is listed on here and they received a 4.8 out of five total points and is very popular with meat producers. However, our speaker today, the AM Ranch, tried out Gray's Cart and decided to, go for, decided to go with Square for reasons that she will share. Square wasn't the highest rated, as you can see, but it's still a very popular option for many farmers. And AM Ranch will provide us some insight in a bit as to why that is and what Square can offer farmers as businesses like yourselves. But it doesn't mean that Square is the best option for you. Depending on all the various activities you have going on online, depending on your business, um, maybe it is Gray's Cart or a different option. In the last webinar CAF held, we actually highlighted Shopify because we had two farms who presented on their great experiences using Shopify. So we'll, we're happy to email that presentation if you're really interested in Shopify. If you want to learn more about any of these platforms, again, the Tech Hub is here to help. And this resource is also linked in the chat. Um, it is a great report. It also has uh, live recordings with farmers on their experiences using these platforms. So there's lots of great peer-to-peer -peer learning opportunities in there as well. So I know we're throwing a lot of resources at you and there are a lot more where this came from. So that's why we're here. That's why the Tech Hub is launching these direct support services because we know it's overwhelming and we know you all need help. Um, so if there's any particular resource you're really interested in wanting to know more about, maybe like Barn to Door, a local food marketplace, we're here to help and we can um, defer you to some resources that focus on those particular platforms. So I wanted to give um, just a few examples on these e-commerce strategies and how once you dig into them a bit deeper, they're really, you'll see that there's just lots of options that can pop up. Um, so one thing with storefront, um, scale and building your brand is an important question with where do you wanna go with your online stores? Cause there's lots of affiliate stores on third party sites available, such as local harvest.org, maybe even eBay, depending on what you're selling. How many products will you feature at any given time? There's a website actually geared towards artists called Big Cartel that offers you a free storefront for up to five SKUs or products. How much capacity do you have for managing your storefront? Do you feel like you're pretty tech savvy? Because there's a free open source platform called Open Food Network that provides you an online store for free. But you have to understand usually what code and how to input all those various things to get your store launched. There's also... Um, they, the, the sites that will just charge you the development fee, so Barn to Door charges around $200 to $500 for a setup fee and then helps you with taking care of your online store. Um, maybe that's the best option for you. So there's lots, lots of options. And then you look at your products. Have you figured out your unit pricing? Um, maybe the unit pricing you were using before launching an e-commerce site won't work anymore because you were selling mostly to wholesale and now you're gonna shift to re retail pricing. There's also lots of components involved with order fulfillment, and farms are getting so innovative and creative in this area. Um, we've heard of a CSA farmer who just ended up using DoorDash to deliver their produce boxes instead of sending staff out in their cars. We've heard GLS is a great option for um, ground and overnight shipping for regional, for regional locations, but UPS was more affordable for out-of-state. And if you have multiple options for your customers um, to receive their purchase, whether it's delivery, pickup, um, different overnight shipping versus normal three-day shipping, <laughs> um, you need to make sure that your e-commerce platform can adjust and accommodate all of those different options because not, not all of them can. There's also delivery management um, options available that maybe you need access to. Um, this is an example of if you do have your own delivery uh, fleet of people, how are they getting, um, how are you optimizing their routes? 
Google Map technically doesn't off offer route optimization. MapQuest gives you um, route optimization up to 20 locations. And then there's uh, Routific, which is a really great system, but charges an additional plugin fee if you use that. It's very advanced and allows you to quickly navigate and optimize uh, the routes for your drivers. So as you see, there's a lot integrated into all the e-commerce platforms and the different options. I just wanted to give you a sample of, of how that can look, but don't get overwhelmed because <laughs> we're here to help. Um, and we're going to have a poll question get launched here, which I will get that launched um, now. So you'll see that this poll is asking you if you are interested in receiving any free technical support from CAF on any of these topics, whether it's getting an e-commerce site launched or just simple support with social media, marketing, um, we're here to help. So um, just having this poll up here for um, another 20 seconds or so, so we can get everyone who's on today's webinar to participate in that. And this is a free opportunity for you to have your own business advisor or technical consultant. So select yes if you'd like support with identifying solutions that will make your local food products more convenient, accessible, and competitive. Um, and so we're going to get Sierra here ready now, who will who had navigated the e-commerce space for the last year or so, and I would say they definitely did a pretty good job at it. <laughs> so we're really excited to hear from her and her experiences. Um, and please put your questions in the chat box for Sierra as they come up, because we'll have time for Q&A at the end of her presentation. So now I present to you uh, Sierra Shapiro with AM Ranch. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here today. I will preface my whole thing with I am not good with technology at all. So I feel like I'm kind of a little bit of a good resource if you um, don't really know how to navigate because um, I did it and I'm not good. So um, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. So we started our business in 2014. My husband and I own and operate AM Ranch in Penn Valley, where we raise pasture-raised beef, pork, lamb, goat, and eggs. Um, after we started, we kind of realized like, okay, we need to figure out how we're going to market our product. So we decided that we would start doing farmer's markets, our local farmer's market in 2015. And that was really great for us. It allowed us to connect with a lot of our community, um, a lot of other farmers and ranchers, as well as like restaurants and that kind of thing. So um, for the next couple of years, we kept doing farmer's market. And in 2017 is when we officially started selling to restaurants, um, which was really exciting because it gave us like a different um, avenue for our product. So um, for those of you who do me, I'm, I'm sure you know, and probably all of you, you that don't, um, you do full cut and wrap or you can sell whole half animal direct to um, people who have the capacity to deal with it, such as restaurants, butcher shops, that kind of thing. So from 2017 to 2018, um, we really focused on making those connections with local restaurants in our community. And by 2019, we had grown to 70% of our business was sales to restaurants and 30% was direct to consumer via farmer's markets. Um, at this time, we did not have a website, an e-commerce platform or anything like that. We were literally just going to farmer's market and selling direct to consumer. Um, so at the end of 2019, um, we wrote up a business plan for 2020 and really had planned on expanding our business to accommodate even more restaurants. So kind of basing our business on that. And then in 2020, um, we were kind of hit with a huge wake up call um, when the pandemic hit and we had basically no no restaurant sales happening. And so we have all of this product, like animals in our field that were like set to go to different restaurants, um, butcher shops that were no longer taking them. And we really had to figure out what we were gonna do. So <clears throat> we decided that um, we were gonna take those, um, what we had planned for restaurants and we were gonna put them into direct to con consumer retail sale. And that is kind of when I decided, we decided, my husband and I, that 
we really needed to find another outlet for selling our product where people could find us a little bit easier. And that's when I started looking into websites. So the other, the other issue with changing from restaurant sales to direct to consumer is that our um, out-of-pocket costs were 60% higher than what we had actually planned on. So that was another thing that we needed to think about when we wanted to get a website was, okay, we need something that is like user-friendly for, for one and two, that doesn't cost a lot because we don't even know if this is going to work. We don't even know if people are going to use our website or e-commerce platform. So, so we decided in about, I want to say in March, February, March, that we were going to kind of partner up with another farm and just kind of work off of their website and that they were using Gray's cart at the time. And so I kind of chatted with her about it and used their website. I had a profile of my own so I could go in and add the products in there that we were selling. And um, it was, a, it was a, good, um, a good website. It was just really expensive uh, for us. Uh, and I felt like, so a little, at Farmer's Market, we really needed something that could, we could do both, um, run inventory off of what we had at Farmer's Market, as well as what was selling online. And we were using Square at Farmer's Market and then Gray's Cart, but it was somebody else's website. So they weren't really talking to each other. So the amount of like labor behind that I was doing to like make sure I was pulling stuff out of our inventory and all of that was just, it just became too much. So um, that's when I started looking more into uh, different different options for what we could do. I looked into, I Googled a lot. Like I said, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. So I used a lot of Google and it really just came down to um, Square. Shopify was an option that was higher up for us, but um, I really just liked how we could integrate farmer's market sales and the inventory that we were running on our e-commerce and they just spoke to each other and we weren't getting mixed up. Customers weren't able to order things that we didn't actually have in stock. So that's when I went ahead and started building our website. Um, we, ha we had a domain, I at least had that much. We had a domain since like 2016. So I took that domain and really just went from scratch and built our own website with e-commerce platform. Um, I really wish that I would have had the resource of CAF or something like that to help just because, like I said, I'm a rookie when it comes to this kind of stuff and it would have just been nice to have a resource, but Square made it pretty easy for me to navigate and figure it out myself. Um, it took me about, I would say like three and a half days, like full, like 12 hour days on the computer to build our website. Um, so it was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. Um, the customers got so much out of it. Um, we obviously told everybody on um, social media that we had a website. You can order from it now. We had multiple different ordering options and pickup options, and our customers just ran with it. Um, the next farmer's market, we actually did pre-sale um, because CDFA allowed us to do that. and it was that our pre-sales were higher than a normal market day, like for that next market. And it was just, it was awesome. So we've kind of just ran with it and um, we've continued to use it. It's been a great resource on top of being a great selling place. It's been a great re resource for people to go and kind of find more out about our farm and that kind of thing. And we've had different grocery stores reach out to us and that kind of thing through our website. So I definitely regret waiting, I don't know, six years to have a website, um, but it has worked really, really well for us. Um, I would say that um, my thoughts to you would be do your research um, on what's gonna work best for you. Um, I, like I said, I Googled, I did lots of things to try and I talked to other people who, who were using different platforms and um, it was just the one that worked best for us. And uh, there's not a one size fits all and you're gonna have need something different than I need for your selling. So um, 
Yeah. And use, like I said, use your resources available to you. I really wish CAF would have been around because I probably would have had like, instead of four days, it would have taken me like two days to do my website. Um, and then Google, YouTube is always a great resource. Um, and I think something that we learned out of this was that not to put all your eggs in one basket. So right now we're still continuing to like, our, our restaurants are just now really starting to open up where we're located. So we're kind of getting back into that, but um, we're not gonna really like put all our eggs in one basket and um, plan on that. Uh, we're gonna keep doing the e-commerce. Uh, I feel like it just offers you a lot of options. We, with Square um, and a lot of platforms, um, there's shipping options. So if something happens again, like we can expand and start to ship our products and that kind of thing. and. Um, like I said, wholesale and people being able to connect with you and see the products that you carry before, you know, sending you just an email off of your Instagram page and saying like, Hey, what do you have? Like they can actually go to your website, use that as a resource to see what you offer and then see if that's any interest to their restaurant or butcher shop or grocery store. So it really has, um, it really has helped us in our business, especially getting through of the pandemic, because I'm really not sure what we would have done otherwise. So. Awesome. Thank you. And we still have some time. So I'm wondering, I'm going to jump to um, this slide, Sarah, of kind of what it looks like when a customer's going through um, purchasing for you. And I'd love to maybe hear more details on um, how many more customers you feel like you've gained through having your storefront available online for folks to find. Um, and also if you can just describe a bit about the customer's experience when they're going onto your store and, and selecting which products to buy and, and just how that works for them. Yeah, definitely. So um, I will say we've gained quite a, a lot of new customers. I, I want to say it's a balance of both of having the e-commerce site and the pandemic because um, especially in our area, which I think it's a pretty common thing everywhere that people were wanting to secure a local food source. And so um, we, last year, our sales like direct to consumer were up like, I want to say like 216%. Um, and I'm not saying that's just due to the e-commerce, but it definitely helped. It allowed people to access our product easier, give them options instead of just coming to farmer's market because we, our product is not available in any grocery stores or anything like that. So if people want our product, they have to come to farmer's market. And sometimes that just doesn't work for people. So we offer a ranch pickup, which has been popular, especially because people want to come see the ranch, you know, come, come hang out. Um, as you can see on this page, we also just in the last like two months started offering the whole and half hog custom order, um, which I will say has been very helpful because it's basically, you can click that and pick which month you want to get your pig. So it helps us plan ahead. So people can order a pig for like July. And so it helps us plan ahead as well as helps with cash flow because as most of you know, we, you know, we don't make a ton of money. And especially with um, how much our costs increased last year, like having that cash flow available is really helpful to us. So that's another benefit to this. And I will say with Square, the, um, the amount of labor that goes into getting products on our website, the way that we actually do it is um, a lot. So I basically inventory every single item to the exact poundage and, and put it into our website. Um, but customers really appreciate that because they know exactly what they're getting and they can pick like, okay, yeah, I want like a four pound shoulder roast instead of like a two pound shoulder roast. So as much as it takes more at the beginning of me putting labor into it, it's easier for the customer. And then I know exactly what the customer wants when I'm picking their order. So Sierra, on that note, we did have a question about how your inventory works. So you're not using barcodes or anything. No, we are not. Um, yeah, so basically we, when we get stuff back from the butcher, half of it's inventoried. So we have like a, 
a little sticker that says exactly the poundage of each piece of bacon in that box. And then the other half is not inventoried. So we physically go through and inventory each package to the exact poundage that it is, and then input it into Square. Um, so I'll, I'll give a little bit of example with Gray's cart, um, at least the way that we were using it, we didn't do it that way. Basically, we would put like, okay, we have 10 pounds of bacon that range between 1.2 pounds and two pounds. And then we would go pick their order. And then after we pick their order, we would have to go input the exact poundage before the customer could know what they're getting. So for me, it was worth it to put everything in individually to square so that it was a little easier for the customers to know and be able to pick what they wanted. Yeah, and so with Square, it automatically updates your inventory when that sale's made, correct? Or is that happening when you're shipping it out to the consumer or the customer? Yeah, <laughs> so that is um, a, right when that sale's made. Um, so somebody, let's say somebody goes on on Thursday, orders their Saturday farmer's market um, order, and then that's gone out of my inventory. So it's there's no chance of somebody else coming on and purchasing that same thing. And then I'm stuck with like, oh, two people got this and I only have one. Um, and same thing at farmer's market. So if somebody comes up to my booth and buys like a pack of sausage and two pounds of bacon, that moment that they purchase that, it's gone out of my inventory and no longer on the, e on the website either. So it that was really, that was my selling point with Square was that it was just really convenient for me and our, our business model. That's awesome to hear. Um, and so with, yeah, we'll jump right into Q and A. Um, and there's some questions that are directly geared towards you, Sierra, and some of some more um, questions regarding your delivery options and different things like that. So maybe Rachel and I can tag team some of these as we navigate them, make sure we, we get to everyone's question. Um, so Donalyn asked if you can elaborate on your decision um, process regarding different delivery options you ended up selecting for your business. Uh, for example, the cost of a farmer's market, I'm assuming like um, maybe even the time having to be at a farmer's market is included in that. Um, customer pickup at your farm, the uh, delivery, drop shipping, etc. And how you work to not spread yourselves too thin. Yeah, that's a great question because I will be very transparent and tell you at the beginning, we were spreading ourselves way too thin. Um, we, we do mainly farmer's market pickups now because we're doing three farmer's markets, um, two on Saturdays and one on Thursdays. Um, and then we do have a pickup option on Wednesdays at the ranch. Um, so it's just convenient because for farmer's markets, because we're already going to be there and we're already going to be packing product and all of that. So we offer them to come pick up anytime during that market. Um, at the beginning, we were offering multiple different pickups at the ranch. And my husband and I are the only ones who currently work on the ranch. So we were trying to navigate people showing up to pick up their product at all times of the day, multiple days a week while trying to get everything done on the ranch. So we kind of narrowed it down to a window of time that they can pick up at the ranch on a certain day of the week. And then we offer those other farmer's market options. Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, and that person can maybe follow up if they um, have any other questions that come up. Yeah. Are you up for answering another one, Sierra? Or do you wanna take a little break while we ask Elizabeth some questions? <laughs> I'm fine with whatever. I'm fine with either. Okay. Well, we had a question um, about asking if you are planning, you touched on this a little bit, but if you could elaborate, planning to go back to selling to restaurants. And they also asked if you can describe um, how you developed those relationships with those restaurants. Were they local to where you lived? And then they said, seems like that securing that cash inflow is important to you, like purchasing the half and the whole haul. Yeah, so um, it really all started with Farmer's Market. Um, we met a lot of people through Farmer's Market and the community and the people just like, um, we really got to know them. They got to know us, they trusted us and they, 
kind of offered up, like, we would love to use our product in our restaurant. How do we make this work? Um, I will say, I will say that where we live um, is like, or where we're located is very special in that local food is huge um, in our county. And so um, we're grateful for that. And then basically once we got into one restaurant, it kind of just snowballed and people just really started learning our name. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just being honest and being reliable because I've seen a lot of people go in and out of restaurants because they're just not reliable or they're not, um, they kind of say that they're going to be able to provide something that they're not. And so it's really just gaining trust and respect with the people you're working with. And then, yeah, like Elizabeth showed in one of her slides, like word of mouth is huge. And so that's kind of how we grew with all of our restaurants and they're all within, um, about 10 miles of us. Wow. Great. Thank you. I'm, Elizabeth, let's, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna, I'm curious because I know some farms are sharing that like a lot of their restaurant clients have just closed down. Um, so I'm curious, you know, what it looks like in your region and in your neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, we went, so we went from, um, three restaurants and a butcher shop to one restaurant in 2020. And they obviously were up and down. It wasn't super consistent. Um, and that I'm going back to the previous question, that was really hard for cash flow. Like we really rely on farmers market. I mean, uh, restaurants that we really relied on restaurant sales through the winter time because there's no farmers markets. And so for cash flow, it was hard when there wasn't. Um, as many restaurants. We do have, um, we have two new restaurants that just uh, opened up brand new in our area that are wanting to work with us. Um, and then our other restaurant who closed down last year is starting to reopen again. Um, and they also are planning on getting products from us again. So I think we're lucky in that a lot of the people that we work with didn't shut down completely. That's good to hear. Yeah, and it also just underscores your point, Sierra, of diversifying your offerings, right? Not putting all yeah. your eggs in one basket. Exactly. Elizabeth, we had some questions that um, I'm sure Sierra could speak to some of these as well, just through her personal experience, but maybe you could take the lead. And Sierra, if you have two cents on it, you can jump in. Um, oh, here's sort of like a very relatable question that I'm sure most people are thinking. So um, in this specific example, how does a startup CSA with three farmer owners create an e-commerce platform for customers to purchase shares week to week without it being too cumbersome since they are sharing both the inputs and the revenue? Yeah, that's a great question. And I know Rashid, so I'm going to be following up with you, Rashid, on this. Um, but there are lots of options out there. Um, so it depends. And uh, Sierra, I'm curious to hear your thoughts because you were attempting this in some way with your graze cart situation. Um, but I know some uh, farms that you know are really community-based, strong local values that are aggregating from smaller producers, and they're they're using Barn to Door, and it's a great it's a great platform for them. I know there is some back-end inventory management that you have to be aware of. Um, there maybe needs to be a lead person managing that inventory instead of like six different farmers updating their inventory. Um, so it really depends on the setup, where how the farmers, where they are at with their tech savviness, um, what resources they need. But I, I, I really want to stress that it is a case-by-case -case basis um, with a lot of these things. Um, as the tech hub gets more um, ingrained with these different examples, we may be able to give you a, a more clear like decision tree format. But um, for right now, we really want to support direct directly um, with these type of situations so that we're, we're not given a, a one shoe fits all when that's not the case. Um, Sierra, do you wanna add with your experiences? Um, sure. So we actually had a very personal experience with this because last, um, I wanna say May, there was a couple of uh, uh, vegetable farmers around, uh, around us that really wanted to collab and create a site where people could go on and purchase all of our things in, in, in one. And um, it kind of was just, it was 
as well as all of us trying to ranch and farm, um, it was just too much to navigate and attempt to figure out. Um, so it's definitely out there. There's a farmer's market in Idaho that's doing a great job with it. Um, with They're literally offering all their vendors online, that kind of thing. But like Elizabeth said, it's really, you've got to have one person who's really there to just manage it. And we, none of us really had that capacity to do that. So it didn't really end up happening. Um, on the other side with the Gray's car, it was just two of us. And she basically gave me a login to the site and I put my stuff on and had my own thing. And then she put her own things on and then we would just collaborate when somebody would place an order that included both of our items. So it was a little easier. It wasn't as many people, it wasn't as much product going on there. Great, thank you. Um, and I, so just a reminder that the Tech Hub is here to support all of you with additional questions. Maybe it's like really specific to your business. We'd love for you to contact us or, or complete that poll. Um, or email us when we send that follow-up email so that we can follow up with you on your particular questions. Sarah is a full-time rancher and farm owner. So while we have her here for, you know, the next seven minutes, I'm going to make sure we utilize that time as much as we can. At Tech Hub, we're always here. This is our job to support you. Um, so I want to make sure we, we use Sarah's peer-to-peer um, -peer feedback as much as we can um, for this last seven minutes. Um, and there is a burning question that I saw come up that I really want to ask. Uh, Bob Knight, who attended our other webinar that had two farmers speaking on their experiences with Shopify and how they're really enjoying it, he is asking why not Shopify? So I think it would be great to hear or for you to elaborate more on the decisions um, that led you away from Shopify, maybe some functionalities you didn't enjoy, or if you could just expand on that. Yeah, so... I will also say again, I'm not good with technology. So that was probably part of the other, that was probably part of it. Um, but I, that was our second option with Shopify because it looked the second most e like easy for me to navigate. Um, it really just came down to ha already having Square, already having our products in Square, already running inventory in Square. And so it was just easier for me to use Square because we already had that going. Um, and Shopify was the next, like it was also could connect the easiest with all of that, you know, but it was just easier for us to use Square because we already had all of it in there and we're already using it. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because you guys already invested in the little um, POS system and all that stuff. Awesome. All right, Rachel, did you see any other questions pop up earlier that were um, directed towards Sierra or both of us? I oh, go ahead. Um, I am not. I'm only speaking for Square on this point, but somebody asked a question about QR code. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have personal experience with it, but Square does offer that option now that you can use this QR code to pay, which is really fancy and beyond my technology capacity, but it's exciting. Cool. Yeah, I think that the Sierra specific questions, I believe we were able to get to, and that's, I think, it's been so valuable. Thank you so much, Sierra, for your time and your insider info on this. And yeah. yeah, maybe we have time for maybe one more question before we wrap up. So, but actually, should we just follow up on that? I mean, Elizabeth, do you have any, um, any, contribution to the conversation about Venmo or QR codes? Uh, not, no, I know the QR codes are huge um, to have just up so that people can scan it, um, especially if you have a farm stand and with COVID safety and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, it's hard to keep up with all the questions as a, as a presenter as well. So I'm trying to scan. Yeah, through. so the question was just about that, you know, they had seen Venmo being used at a farm stand and QR codes for voluntary payment. Um, and I've used it before too. I went to a, you know, a UPIC or something and they just have the Venmo handle up there and it's pretty simple. Um, and somebody else chimed in, another participant chimed in saying it, that they had used it successfully on their own. Mm-hmm. 
Great. Oh, here's a question. I have one last question. I think it would be great to hear from Sierra on this. Um, so this is when I think when we were highlighting how you can maybe have an affiliate store, you know, with all the ready-made customers that are already um, that that site is already capturing, such as if you were to sell your products on like um, Local Harvest or eBay was the example that I brought up. Um, so what methods have you used for integrating multiple systems and outlets to reach the most customers possible? Um, and Sarah, I'm thinking, um, I'm not sure what your guys' marketing strategies are, but if you have any like social media accounts or email campaigns that you're using or other third-party sites that maybe a, a local farmer's market that has your website highlighted and shared in newsletters, I'm just really curious to hear all the different um, marketing channels you're exploring or trying to. Yeah, so um, Square does offer a, um, a great, a really easy, convenient, like email direct to customers that are already in your system, um, which was, has, we've used a few times, such as when we put the whole and half hog availability, they sold out for six months, like as soon as I sent that email out. So uh, that is really helpful. And it just kind of does it for you. Every time somebody makes an order, it captures their email and then you just click send all and you make your email and send it to everyone. So that's been helpful. Um, we do use social media, especially for um, like restocks and letting people know we're going to be at farmer's market or anything like that. Um, we Social media is our other big one. And the local farmer's markets that we use do highlight us um, sometimes, but um, I really we are really passionate about like making that direct um, contact with customers. So I feel like for us, that's been huge to be at, just be at farmer's market and people see our face and come and ask like, how are things going? Like, how are all the piglets that you had last week that you shared on social media? Just making those connections as has been, has been really nice. So um, social media is fun because it kind of lets people just follow along with day-to-day -day ranch stuff and just, instead of just seeing you there selling your product. That's great. So your current supply is already being maxed. You got, and I've heard that just emailing your current and existing customers or past customers is a great way to get sales out there. So it sounds like that's working for you and you don't need to do too much more. Yeah, exactly. We are at, we have, we have grown and we still cannot keep up. We wanted to do a CSA over the winter and it was just, we didn't have the product. Um, so yeah, it's been working out well for us, but it definitely took a a, a few years for us to get established with that. So that's awesome. All right. So I know we're about, um, we're at four o'clock now. So just like to thank um, Sarah again, um, UC Sarah for making today's webinar possible. And for those who did complete that poll or submit your contact information and that link that was in the chat, we'll be following up with you very soon. Um, and yeah, we also have our, our general CAF listserv if anyone's interested in joining that and you'll get updates on policy, um, advocacy opportunities, events, free resources. Um, so that's in the chat as well. Um, and